When I was a small boy, I looked forward to the moment when my grandfather come home. He would catch me in his arms and he would hug me tight. And I knew that I was loved. I'm told that my mother had asked them to take me while she got settled with her second husband. On Sundays, I'd sit with my grandma in the pews and she'd give me a dollar to put in a plate. I felt really important. I don't really remember going back to live with my mother. My first memory was such a shock, I'll never forget it. My stepfather Bill was yelling at my mother, screaming at her about his dinner not being right. He was standing over, then he grabbed her by the hair and drug her over to the stove and ran her head first into it. I could not stop screaming. I ran to my mother and tried to grab Bill and get him off of her. He hit me harder than I've ever been hit since. Blood ran down my face, but I couldn't move my hands to wipe it off. My mother was crying and holding me and asking me to talk to her. Bill was saying he was sorry and trying to give me a Coke. As kids, we never got to drink Cokes. I wanted that Coke. <laughs> so I really wanted that Coke. I set up and took it, and then I drank it. He promised me that he wouldn't hit us anymore, but I had to promise not to tell anybody how my head got busted. Later that night, I listened to him tell the doctor how clumsy I was. This doctor got to know me well, but it wasn't only me that Bill was after. Bill getting drunk, beating, molesting his children was an ongoing thing in our house. I seen him rape both my older brother and half-sister, his own daughter. I knew to never let myself get caught alone with him. Bill saw me one day when I seen him and Randy. He was doing terrible things to him. He motioned for me to come over to him, but there was no way that I was going down that hall. I ran into the backyard and I climbed to the very top of that tree. That was my safe spot. No one could climb that tree higher than me. I climbed down after dark when my mother got home. She gave me some food. We didn't talk about it. We never talked about it. I decided to run away. I knew the area very well. Back then, us kids were not allowed to stay in the house during the day, during the summertime. We had to go outside and find something to do while it was light outside. The older boys had a fort. It was a hole in the ground with some boards over it. it had a mattress in it, some milk crates to sit on, and there were shelves in it too. The first night I stayed there, I was so scared. It was so dark in there, I couldn't see anything. The next morning, I stole some candles from Garland's food store. I tried to remain hidden because I knew if I got caught that I would have to go back to Bill's house. So I made sure to watch everything. After the first week, I figured out there was a gas station just across the field that I could wash up in because people notice dirty children. I knew not to be out of the hole after dark because people notice kids after dark. I knew not to be out at school time because people notice kids that are not in school. After school let out, I'd go to McDonald's. Did y'all know that in the 1970s, McDonald's threw away every hamburger and, and whatever was left after 20 minutes of being under the heat lamp? It's true. I smile every now and then as I remember how resourceful I was at such a young age. But after what felt like a long time, the cops did pull me out of that hole. They took me to the station because I would not tell them where I lived. They figured it out, though. They took me back home. They talked to my mother, and she told them that it was better off that I wasn't there. I remember the tears rolling down my face. It wasn't until years later that I learned she was just trying to give me a sporting chance. 
The first place I went was a holding facility where I met my caseworker. He was a kind man who believed in what he was doing. It was him that I'd wear. I first got my first pair of new shoes. I tried the shoes on. He asked me how I liked them. I took off. I ran up one aisle, down the other. And when I got back to him, I said, man, they're great. I can run real fast. I still remember his words when he kneeled down, put his hand on my shoulder. He said, son, where you're going, you're never going to have to run again. He was wrong, of course, but... He didn't lie. He just didn't know any better. The next place was Coastal Bend, New City, where the guy in charge was covered with scabs. His, his skin would break open and bleed. I was afraid of him. At this place, all of the kids had to work, walking the beach and picking up trash. I got so sunburned that I had to sleep sitting up. Next, there was a string of foster homes, state-run homes, and short-time facilities. At 17, I joined the Army. Surprisingly, I did well. I had fought so much by then, I'd even won a Golden Gloves championship by the time I was 16. My face was great at catching punches. <laughs> Back then, I hated me as much as the world hated me. I could never feel at peace. There was a hole in me dark as the one they pulled me out of back in the 70s. After I got out of the Army, I traveled around a bit. I never had a problem getting a job or keeping it as long as I needed it. I would save money, and when I had enough or whenever I thought I started caring about someone or them me, I would leave before they could hurt me. During one stop, someone I considered a friend brought over some meth. He asked me if I wanted to try it. At first, I said no, but eventually I did. Instantly, he looked like a different person when he took it. And that's really what I wanted. I didn't want to be me. No more hurt. In fact, my past pain was so far from my thoughts that I just wanted to stay there forever. No more hurt. I knew that I wanted some more because if a little made me feel this good, what would a bunch make me feel like? You know, my addiction started small but soon became, became a big problem. I, I had started to uh, sell it so that I could afford to keep doing it. And then I got busted. I went to jail and then to prison. It felt like going back home. Really, I'd been training for going to prison my whole life. My only thought was, how am I going to get some meth inside of prison? Turns out the guards will bring it in for you, for a price. After doing my sentence, I was released in Huntsville, Texas. I was high as a cloud by the time I got out of the bus station. I had already made arrangements to start moving product, and with the connections I made in prison, I knew I couldn't fail. Just selling someone else's product was not the way to go. So I had a friend hook me up with a cook who, for a small price, taught me how to cook too. I cooked for him for six months. I was fearless. Oh, no. I was stupid. But on the day of the last cook, I got busted. The people that I'd been cooking for didn't want the competition. So I went back to prison. And then when time was up, I got out, but then went right back again. Three times I went to prison, three times was released, three times never got out of the bus station without getting high. After I got out the third time, I met Amy, who was later to become my wife. There's no doubt that Amy loved me. Unfortunately for her, I couldn't reciprocate that because I didn't know how to love. So our marriage was doomed from the start. I had waited until I was 37 years old to start having kids because I did not want to be a runaway dad. I never wanted my kids to go through any of the things that I did. On my fourth trip to prison, I lost more than I was equipped to deal with. 
I never knew how much I, <clears throat> I never knew how much I loved the kids and wife until it was too late. Amy divorced me while I was down and asked me to just leave her and the kids alone. I was completely broken. I was hurting more than I could stand. Right then I knew that I would have to change. I needed a plan. About that time, another inmate who was showing some of the other guys a pamphlet on a program called PEP, Prison Entrepreneurship Program. This program accepts 1% of the applicants submitted to them. There's a written essay, why you think you should be accepted. Then you have to pass a test to, dis to demonstrate that you have the mental capacity to, to pass the course. Also, people with drug offenses were rarely given a chance because so many had gotten out and went right back to drugs. I got in, but the course was very hard. First, they identified my character defects, pointed them out, and then helped me correct them. Then, once they saw that I was moving forward, they educated me and started running uh, on the way to start running a successful business. This program gave me tools, not just for running businesses, but for running a life. This program gave me the tools I have to use to win back the respect of my ex-wife and my children. <clears throat> Last year, they spent Christmas with me, and I've already bought their tickets for, to fly them up here this year. They can't wait. They call me just about every day, and I provide for them without being court-ordered to do it. In all of this, I bet you're thinking my life's been pretty hard, been pretty bad. But the good thing is I was just beat on, run into the dirt, kicked, knocked down. Today, my sister is in a mental institution, unable to deal with society at all. My older brother lives on the streets, unemployable, with no hope of ever gaining anything in this life because his mind is messed up. My younger brother mildly retarded from hits in the head and my mother's dead. <laughs> so I think myself is blessed. Today my children are 12, 10, and 8. Two boys and a girl. I say I got two boys and a car alarm. That's right, because she goes off anytime they go near her. They're great kids who love their dad as much as he loves them. I'm grateful for my children, for their love. I'm grateful for my sanity. I'm still able to put together a coherent thought sometimes. I'm grateful for my ex-wife, who calls me at least three times a week just to talk to me about her job and the kids. I'm grateful for a job that I've had the entire time I've been out. I've stayed employed, gainfully employed. 18 months I've been out, and for discovering the ability that I can love and be loved. Yeah.